Hey, Vana. Hey, can you please introduce yourself? Who are you and what you do? Sure, I'm a medium practicing in Newport Beach, California, and I've been doing this work for 23 years full time. And up until now, I've done over 16,000 one on one sittings in eight countries in these last 23 years. And people often ask, how do you know that you've done over 16,000 one on one mm -hmm. sessions? Well, I've been doing this nonstop for 23 years, and up until last year, I was doing six sittings a day, four days a week, and then this last year I went down to five sittings a day, four days a week, and it's accumulated to over 16,000 people that I have helped in eight countries. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between psychic and a medium? Sure. Um, all mediums like myself are mm -hmm. psychic. We have psychic impressions and psychic thoughts, um, but not all psychics are mediums. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you do a reading to yourself? No, because, or I can't do a reading for a family or friends that mm -hmm. I know. Because if I'm seeing spirit come through, I don't know if it's in my imagination because mm -hmm. I knew my uncle or I knew my grandmother or if it's really happening. So I always like to say the less the medium knows, the better. So mm -hmm. when a person like yourself comes to see me, if I don't know anything about you, it's perfect because then I'll know that's your father coming through, that's your grandmother coming through, mm -hmm. that's your son coming through. But if I was doing a session for my sister or my mother and I saw these people coming through, I'm thinking, is that coming from spirit or is that my imagination? Mm -hmm. Because you know the spirit. Exactly. Yes. What is your first memory of something like this was happening in your life? Like how old were you mm -hmm. and what is your first memory? When you start to recognize like, okay, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something. going back to when I was about, I'd say about six or seven years of age. Mm -hmm. And I was, for the last three months, I was in the back of my yard playing with my Tonka toys and digging with shovels and dirt with my friend Joey. And Joey lived about four houses down the road mm -hmm. towards the end of the street. And so him and I would dig with our, our, our shovels and our, our toys for like three or four months consistently every day. And when we're five, six, six or seven years of age, it was before I started first grade. And then Christmas came around and my mom and dad are all big into Christmas. And so they're putting up their Christmas stockings. And I said, well, we got to put a, a, a stocking up for Joey since he's my best friend. Mm -hmm. And my mom said, who's, who's Joey? And I said, Joey, the one I've been playing with, you know, in the backyard for the last three months. And she said, oh, honey, she goes, you've been playing back there by yourself. She goes, you're always smiling, but she goes, you're by yourself. And that's when I thought I was losing my mind mm -hmm. because eh, after that, everything dissipated. I didn't see him anymore. And so I thought I was losing my mind. So it wasn't until I was in my early 20s um, did I allow myself to pay attention to the impressions I was getting and then in my early 20s um, I had a, a dream when I was at my college at USC in Los Angeles and in that dream Mother Teresa came in and uh, it was a, a dream that she basically came in and put her hands on me this is back in 1990 1990 when she was still alive she put her hands on me on my head and gave me a blessing and and I walked with her into the village and so I woke up the next morning and I called the Catholic Church in Los Angeles. I said, can you tell me anything about Mother Teresa? Do you know anything about mm -hmm. her? No. I mean, a little bit because my parents are Catholic, but mm -hmm. not that much. Um, so I said, can you tell me anything about, you know, Mother Teresa? And so the receptionist says, well, we have the brothers of Mother Teresa or the sisters of Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. Which number would you like? And I was about ready to say the sisters because, you know, Mother Teresa is a female. And then that same voice that I heard when I was a child came back and says, no asked for the brothers. So I asked for the brothers of Mother Teresa, and then I spoke to a person on the phone that same moment, um, and that person says, where are you located? And I said, I'm right here at USC in Los Angeles. And they says, well, if you'd like to come over to our home, there's a man that's, that's from India that would be interested in talking to you about this. And I said, great. So I drove over three or four blocks up Figueroa, which is very, very close to my college, and as I was walking up the stairs, this Caucasian man said, oh, you must be Tim. I said, yes. So I walked in, he goes, this is Brother Yeshadas, and this is Indian man. Mm -hmm. And um, long story short is he was the head of a male missionaries worldwide. Mother Teresa was the head of the female missionaries worldwide. Mm -hmm. And so I stayed with him three months later, worked with Mother Teresa in Calcutta, 
in 1991. What did you do over there? I did a lot. Yeah, I did a lot of hospice work. You know, I would be going out giving food mm -hmm. um, with the missionaries. Um, you know, in the rail stations where a lot of the poor people, um, some people that they couldn't afford a haircut, we would give them haircuts. So we were just basically at the disposal of of the city, of whatever they needed, mm -hmm. um, just to give help. That must be a very good experience because we were in India and it's pretty challenging to be there or to see all these uh, poor people mm -hmm. or people on the streets is just very different experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been to 30 countries mm -hmm. and um, India is by far the dirtiest country out of all 30 countries I've been to. Absolutely. But I'll tell you, mm -hmm. when I was there, I remember waking up the next morning and as I woke up the next morning, I put my hands out and I saw this, all this poverty, you know, poor mm -hmm. kids walking along the streets, half naked, cows walking down the streets, just really smoggy, the air quality is really horrible. And I remember stretching my arms up like this and saying, oh, thank you, God, I'm home. Now, that sounds crazy, but you felt it's, yeah, yeah, past life. I knew it, I was there in a past life. Mm -hmm. So it felt home to me. Yeah, okay, very well. So prior to this experience, so when you were about six, seven years old, you, you were sitting like playing with your mm -hmm. imaginary friend. And then during that time, so when you were going to India, how old were you? Around 20? I was, um, I was actually 24, 20, 24 years of age. So what was happening in between? Nothing. And you just kind of blocked it. Great question. Uh -huh. The reason why I blocked it was because shortly after the whole Christmas stocking incident with my, mm -hmm. my mom and Joey, about three months later, my brother, my older brother, who's 18 years older than myself, was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. And so we would see all these violent attacks with him talking to spirit. And he was basically losing his mind right in front of us. So it scared me because every time that I saw him like talking to spirits, mm -hmm. I was looking at the spirits or we was looking at where he was looking at the spirits and I'm not seeing what he's seeing. So I thought I was really losing my mind. But did you see something? I did not. So okay. he was seeing spirits, but I didn't see anything. Mm -hmm. And I just saw this brother who was just paranoid. Um, and so that really scared me, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you're in, like in second grade or in third grade. Okay. It's very, very traumatic when you have a brother who is consistently going through these episodes. So every time after that, when I would see spirit off to the left, I would turn the right. And if I was you know, walking down the road and I saw spirit off the right, I would turn the left. I constantly ignored it. Yeah. I fought it up until my early 20s. And the reason why I opened up in my early to mid 20s is because I did so much research on schizophrenia mm -hmm. and the chances of getting schizophrenia past 21 is very, very limited. Okay. So I allowed myself, I'm like, okay, I'm 22, I'm 23 years of age now. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm gonna get mental illness. But, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. but I always joke and say, mm -hmm. well, you know, my very, very traditional Catholic family, they think I still have mental illness being a medium, oh, but um, I just say, keep on praying for my soul because that's mm -hmm. what they're doing, you know, and that's just the truth. You know, I come from mm -hmm. a family of very, very strict Catholics, mm -hmm. um, but I've had this gift since I was a child and I've helped so many thousands of people, mm -hmm. which I love. I love doing this work. Next question. Mm -hmm. So. When you, when it was kind of like your first reading or so you kind of like pause it I would say mm -hmm. and then what happened like okay so you were like okay I, I don't have a schizophrenia sure. so what happened or where did you get the first reading or how did you start to be open to it to yeah this great question so mm -hmm. after I graduated from USC then uh, just a few weeks later um, I went to India Mm -hmm. um, so right after my graduation, just a few months later, actually it was in December, so six months later, mm -hmm. um, I found myself in Calcutta working with Mother Teresa for a week, week and a half. Um, and then when I got back, I went back working at the grocery store, which I was a checker at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And then at that time, I met my previous uh, relationship, my previous partner. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, he and I would go back and forth to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And then one time we were at a restaurant in Hawaii with his friend who's a firefighter for the Honolulu Fire Department, his wife and their children, and how, how the table is situated. I, he, the firefighter sat there, I was here. My partner, Robbie, and his wife, his, his, his friend's wife and kids were down there. And so all of a sudden, I just looked at this man and I said, there's a woman coming in off that side, left shoulder. I said, that's your mom's side of the family. I said, she keeps on telling me two things over and over again and she's just like, I didn't say she's driving me crazy, but it felt like she's driving me crazy because she kept on repeating it over and over again. 
tell my son to start joking around with me again mm -hmm. and tell him to cry and grieve over my passing. And so I said that to him. I said, the only reason I'm saying this to you <clears throat> is because I know that when I say it, I know that the voice will dissipate. Mm -hmm. So he goes, what do you want to say? And I said mm -hmm. what I just said. He started crying. He mm -hmm. put his head down, started rocking back and forth. And I looked off to the side with my partner, you know, his friend's wife yeah. and the children were down there and they probably never saw their father cry before, mm -hmm. ever. And um, he composed himself back up and he said, you know, he goes, I'm the youngest of the four Hawaiian um, children and I was the only one that did not cry at my mom's funeral. Mm -hmm. And my mom was a very, very tough, tough woman. My other siblings were afraid of her, but I was the only one that joked around with her. Mm -hmm. So that came in from spirit, from his mother, and that was basically my first sitting in Kailua, Hawaii. Do you have any kind of like an on and off button? Because imagine you do this, mm -hmm. obviously, yeah. but you need rest after this. So yeah. how is it, like how, how you tune into it, like okay, like now I can read something or not? Great question. Mm -hmm. So whenever I do a session, like a one-on-one -on -one session mm -hmm. with a client, or sometimes I'll do groups, sometimes up to um, six to 25 people, Mm -hmm. um, a lot of um, probably your followers have seen me doing the casino shows, um, and those are 700 people. Mm -hmm. um, and I did five or six 700 seat casino shows, um, and I do the same opening guided meditation for mm -hmm. everyone, whether it's a huge, huge group like 700 people, or I just do it for one on one sitting. It's just a two minute guided meditation. And then that basically tells spirit, like that barber light, you know, mm -hmm. you know, the old fashioned barber light that spins, it basically tells spirit, okay, the barber's open. I'm okay. open for business. When I'm done mm -hmm. with the sitting, or I'm done with the group, or I'm done with the big demonstration of spirit, what I'll do is I'll get everybody to do the closing two minute meditation, guided meditation, mm -hmm. and then that turns off the spirit light. So that basically tells spirit, I'm not working anymore. Yeah. And that works for me. That's so interesting. Yeah. I was wondering about it, like how do you do that? Like you uh, can just like read somebody or? Yeah. So you now, don't have to, be, have to tune into it really. Yes, um, I mean? but I don't want to be bombarded by this all the time mm -hmm. because I kind of feel that sometimes some of the people that are on the street corners, mental illness, mm -hmm. they're constantly being bombarded by spirit. Now, some of them are mentally ill. Mm -hmm. I feel some of them really do have a gift, mm -hmm. but they are being bombarded. And when I turn off that light, that you know, barbershop light, it basically tells spirit, I'm resting, don't bother me. And the reason why I'm saying that mm -hmm. was because this is going back probably when I first started. This is going back about 22 and a half, 23 years ago. And I woke up in the middle of the night to use the restroom. Mm -hmm. So of course, as you know, we, as we all do, when we have to go up and we have to urinate, we have to tinkle, um, I you know, had my eyes closed and so I was walking down the hallway and I'm like, okay, this is this is the, the spare bedroom. You're just and touching, then yeah, touching, touching the wall. Yeah, touching one. I'm like, okay, this is the uh, the bathroom door. And of course you know where the toilet is. And so for us guys, you know, sometimes it just you just want to sit down like a girl. You don't mm -hmm. want to have to aim. So I just sat down like a girl and peed. And as I kind of went like this to open my eyes up a little bit, I saw this woman hanging from the ceiling with a rope around her neck. Mm -hmm. It scared the hell out of me. And it was scared me so much that I fell off, almost fell off the toilet seat. And I shook my head and it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And I told Spirit, I said, don't ever do that again. If you want me to do this work for you, mm -hmm. I will do this work, but don't ever scare me like that again. What happened was the next day, I had six sittings. Mm -hmm. The fourth person who came in was this Japanese man. And when he came in, I saw that exact same woman that I saw the night before. And I described what I saw. And I said, there's a, there's a noose around her, um, her, uh, her neck and she's wearing a red dress. And he goes, that's my wife. She committed suicide mm -hmm. three months ago and she died in a red dress. So basically what happened Ivana was that person came in, that person from Spirit came in a day early. They, mm -hmm. they, they wanted to make that connection happen with her husband so mm -hmm. strong that she came in early. So sometimes Spirits really look for you because yes. they know that you mm -hmm. can be that connection Ex to somebody absolutely. Able to pass the message. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Um, you know, I have um, clients from all over the world. I've seen so many different types of people. Mm -hmm. And I remember going back maybe about 18 years ago, this um, this woman comes in and has a sitting with me, and, and I remember in that time I was answering the phone calls myself mm -hmm. and taking appointments myself, and um, 
she calls up, the man calls up and says, my wife would like to have a sitting with you, but she doesn't speak English, she only speaks Russian. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that's fine, as long as you can translate, I can do my work. And he goes, well, will you charge me the extra fee you know, for me to sit in? I don't need the sitting, it's just for my wife, I'm just yeah. translating. I'm like, no worries, you don't need to pay the extra fee, mm -hmm. um, sit in the sitting. So I did the city, and it was her son um, who was murdered in Los Angeles. Um, it was a, a Russian mob going back about 22, 23 years ago, and they, they submerged his body in, I think it's Lake Balboa, um, and it was all in the press. And so he came through and gave a lot of closure to the mother. And at the very end, when they're walking out, I said to the husband, I said, how did you hear about me? And he goes, well, in Ukraine, we have a spiritual advisor that we call who's a psychic. Um, and when our son was murdered, um, we needed answers. We needed, we needed direction. Um, so we called our friend, this woman in Ukraine, and the woman in Ukraine said, I can't help you, but there's a man by the name of Tim who can. And then the Russian man says, we don't know any Tims. Mm -hmm. So fast forward about two or three months, they were at a party in Bel Air, and um, a woman came up and says, I heard that you lost your son, I'm really sorry. And of course they said, thank you very much. And the woman says, I don't know if you're open to this, but I have a medium that I've gone to that's done wonders for me and his name is Tim Brunn. Yeah. And so that's when the light bulb went off. So getting back to your question, mm -hmm. absolutely. It's a whole network. Mm -hmm. Why do you think people are looking for the medium? Mm -hmm. Closure. What is the most common? Thing? Yeah, closure. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that um, most of my clients come in wanting validation that it's actually them coming through, mm -hmm. like that life after death exists. Mm -hmm. That's for some people. Some of it is closure, that that person's in a good space, um, that they're in a happy space or in a good space. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they need closure in a sense, was, was my son's um, death a murder or is it a suicide? You know, um, And so they need closure. So it's really individualistic from person to person. Um, depending on what the need is, yeah. but I'll tell you, you know, I've been solidly booked for the last 23 years every single day, even during this last year for COVID, starting of course in March, as you know, um, I've been solidly booked. But I'll tell you, since March mm -hmm. till, till now, during this whole pandemic, um, I've only had two people ask me, what are your thoughts about COVID? Everybody else, business as usual. Mm -hmm. It's like they want to have that closure, they want to have that connection, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a few actually readings by Tim and he's very excellent. So oh, thank you. <laughs> and for me it was I think it's overall a very healing experience. That's what I would say. Very healing for people. You know, mm -hmm. what I am um, um, always like to say is the less the medium knows the better. Mm -hmm. You know. So whenever a client books a session with me, you know, they go online or they can call the office. Um, they can just give their first name if they want. Mm -hmm. all, all we need is a name um, and a phone number, just in case I don't make it into work if I'm sick or whatever, we can call us and cancel. Um, some people, because they're skeptical, sometimes they will give a fake name mm -hmm. and they'll give their neighbor's phone number. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll come in, I'm like, oh, hi, Nancy, nice to meet you. She goes, well, I'm not Nancy, I'm actually Samantha. I'm like, oh, okay, I said, it says Nancy. Oh, I, I did that because I didn't want you to research me. And I'm thinking like, okay, that's fine. Um, but you know, some people are very, very skeptical. And I'll tell you, they should be, because I'm a very skeptical person myself, and um, I always like to say the less the medium knows, the better. So whenever I start my sessions, I do a, the opening two minute guided meditation like mm -hmm. I did with you, and then I just describe how this works. I say on your left side, when they appear, mm -hmm. they come in on your mother's side. When they stand over the right shoulder, that's your father's side. When they stand directly behind you, husband or wife, brother or sister, son or daughter or friend, cousin or nephew, it's the other category. Mm -hmm. And then once I let my clients know how that works, I proceed to see who's coming through and I just basically go to that person. Mm -hmm. um, I call them sittings. We sit with spirit and we see who comes in and who doesn't come through by the validations that they supply. I always tell my clients, you know, in a sitting, you will always get, well, with me that is, mm -hmm. in a sitting, you will always get what you need you might not get who you want. Mm -hmm. So you might need you know, your father to come through and say, I'm sorry for being an alcoholic, mm -hmm. but you really wanted your husband to come in. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah, understand? So mm -hmm. you always with me get what you need. You might not get who you want. But again, I have no guarantees who comes in and who doesn't. I don't have any control over it. Mm -hmm. All I can tell you is I honestly see, feel, and hear. And you know, even with my clients, 
sometimes I will not argue with them because I'm not an argument of person, mm -hmm. but I'll say, um, no, your son committed suicide. No, he was murdered. I'm like, no, he's showing me that he did it himself. Yeah. Um, and I said, no offense. I said, but even though you're the one paying me to do the work, I don't work for you. Right now, your son's my boss. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure I stay in business. And this is what he's saying. And I'll tell you, Ivana, nine out of 10 times, a person will, these, that type of person will leave a little frustrated, thinking that I wasn't seeing clearly mm -hmm. or just was not talking truth. Um, and then find out three, four months, sometimes two years later, it all came out as truthful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again. Because that cannot lie. It's just, you, you mm -hmm. get clear information directly from the exactly. from spirit. Mm -hmm. So can you please describe exactly what you see? Imagine now I'm like Tim, I want to know what you see. Mm -hmm. how, how is it for you? Like, is it pictures? Is it some sort of like, uh, obviously maybe smell or mm -hmm. exactly about the pictures? I'm curious because you are so distributed very little description mm -hmm. it is so accurate mm -hmm. let's say like you have people from all around the world there is different things you maybe never saw in your life before mm -hmm. but you know exactly mm -hmm. how to describe it right so like how is it mm -hmm. um, you know I only speak English and some of my close friends say that I don't even do that very well mm -hmm. um, but that's the only language and you know I went to private school for 16 years mm -hmm. and so I still you know apparently to my friends um, say I don't speak English at times that well However, when clients come to see me and they say, you know, you know, my, my mother who died was Russian, or the people that I want to connect um, were, were German. Do you speak German? Do you speak Russian? I says, no. But I said that, I say to them that it's all by thought. That person of spirit will send that thought through, mm -hmm. and then that's how I translate it. Even the people that only speak English, they don't speak English, they send it through by the thought, yeah. and they send it to my mind, mm -hmm. and they send me different images, different things. Yes, so they send that image, and you mm -hmm. just, you just mm -hmm. pretty much say what you see. Yeah, uh -huh. so just um, right before we started filming, yeah. I had one phone appointment, mm -hmm. um, and um, the woman on the other line, at the very end, um, it was basically her brother mm -hmm. uh, who was coming through, and the woman seemed young, I'm sure she probably was maybe um, in her maybe mid 30s, late 30s, because her brother who died was only in his 40s. Um, so I'm assuming that she's probably in that age group. But even she's now raising her brother's son. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I said to her, I said, Big Bear. And she goes, Excuse me? I says, I don't know where you are calling from here in the United States or in the world. I said, But it's Big Bear, California. They're showing me, or he's showing me Big Bear. And she goes, I said, I said to her, do you like the mountains? Mm -hmm. And she hesitated and she mm -hmm. goes, yes, I do. And I'm like, nope, you hesitated. I said, and I have to be a little more specific because who doesn't like the mountains, Yeah. right? So then I said, what's with Big Bear? And she goes, oh. and she just broke down crying. She said, my, my nephew who I'm raising for New Year's, he went up to Big Bear, mm -hmm. California, and he was in the mountains for on New Year's Eve, and basically it was his father coming through and saying, you know, tell my son I was there with him in Big Bear. Mm -hmm. I thought it was for her. And when she said, I don't know what Big Bear means, I'm like, I'm still hearing Big Bear. So they showed me the images of the mountains. I heard Big Bear. Um, my first sitting this morning today, um, I was smelling alcohol coming through. So that means that the person who died was a drinker or alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Um, I would be thinking my client is drunk. <laughs> you know, um, you know um, sometimes because it's very vivid for you, probably, right? Sometimes I have to be very careful because mm -hmm. sometimes a person will come in having a couple of drinks, and the reason why I found out later they came in having a couple of drinks mm -hmm. is because they're so scared and so nervous about seeing a medium or seeing me mm -hmm. that they had to calm their nerves. So, for example, with alcohol, when alcohol comes in, I kind of—I mean, I'm doing this from here, but I go. I'm kind of like smelling you, but from here, but you don't know I'm smelling you. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, the alcohol's not for her. Mm -hmm. And I'm, then I think, I'm like, is it for me? I'm like, no, because I rarely mm -hmm. drink. Um, and I'm like, oh, it was your father. Mm -hmm. And then the client says, yes, that was my father was an alcoholic. So mm -hmm. I always have to make sure, because sometimes I'm smelling alcohol, and it's like, oh, it's from, you know. And that's why on the website, we tell everybody, when you come to see me, don't wear any perfumes, don't wear any aftershave, don't wear any scented lotion, mm -hmm. because I'm very, very sensitive to the sounds, the smells, the sights, and when the strong smells come in, I can't smell the cigarette smoke, or the cigar smoke, or I can't smell the weed. You know, there's all different types of smoke. Of course. You know, and so if I said, oh, your grandfather used to smoke marijuana. No, 
used to smoke a cigar or your, your mother used to smoke cigarettes no she smoked crack cocaine you know mm -hmm. the thing is is that you have it's all every different sm uh, smell is is it's very specific mm -hmm. so the less kind of scent that i have in here it doesn't um, fog my mind mm -hmm. would you be able to describe let's say somebody dies so many people are scared of death so what would you say like what happens even somebody dies in this physical body mm -hmm. do you know kind of like where the soul goes or what is happening to make yeah. that transition can yeah. you maybe describe the transition mm -hmm. so ivana when a person's on the planet whether you're 10 years of age and you die mm -hmm. or whether you're 30 years of age and you die or whether you're 100 years of age mm -hmm. when you die all within the first seven seconds you have what's called a life review so you sometimes you hear sometimes a person who has like a near-death experience and they say oh my god my whole life flashed before me mm -hmm. you know you hear that it's, that's true because all in a second you see all of the things you've done and in that life review you know in that first seven seconds mm -hmm. um, you see all the good you've done and you see all the bad that you've done mm -hmm. and I mentioned this to different audiences especially with large shows because when I do a one-on-one -on -one sitting I don't have time to um, talk about these things I want to get right to, to, to the business um, but when I do large shows I, I, I mentioned this that you know um, it's it's a very intense feeling when we do this work and it's very very amazing to mm -hmm. connect and, and and bring that through mm -hmm. so somebody dies in the okay so it's within seven, seven seconds, seconds yeah this, this happens. yeah what so after? so after seven seconds mm -hmm. then basically after that life review mm -hmm. then you're greeted by many times relatives or friends if you're killed or murdered mm -hmm. um, many times you're not greeted by friends or relatives because they did not know that you were coming over mm -hmm. you know um, if it's a slow process um, a cancer leukemia AIDS whatever it may be if you're being in hospice yeah chances are you will be greeted by your loved ones your family because they know that you're coming over they're getting prepared okay um, but the astral world is where everybody hangs out and that's what we would call the Judeo Christians mm -hmm. would call heaven you know and it's just basically a holding space where you link up with your family again mm -hmm. all your people that are part of your soul group and then that's when you decide do I reincarnate to come back or do I move on and it's really up to you mm -hmm. And my question exactly is about reincarnation. Mm -hmm. So let's say somebody has a reading, and the person who died in between reincarnate. Mm -hmm. Can you somebody like that come to that's the That's a great. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. The only way I can answer that is mm -hmm. when I do a session. If a person's coming in from spirit, whether they died a year ago or they died, I don't know, seventy-five years ago, that person has not reincarnated. Mm -hmm. Now, when I do a session and a person's so-and-so does not come through, um, they say, do you, do you feel that my dad or my mom or my brother or sister have reincarnated? And I say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just because I don't see them does not mean that they have reincarnated. It just means that I, I don't see them. And here's the interesting point. I had a client who was actually in my book, Life and Death. I, I put him in there and you know he's, a, he's an attorney. and. Um, the thing about him is that he's a very, very attorney-like person. He's very, very skeptical. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to him about, you know, when we did the session, his mother came through. Um, but when the mother was in that session, she hogged the whole sitting. And then, like, session after session, he came back, like, for six or seven sessions in the next year. That's a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, he keeps on coming back to connect with his mother. This is a true story. On the eighth sitting, you know, I would see my attorney client, and he's, at that time, he was probably like 65 years of age, uh, 60 years of age, because now he just turned 80. Um, and he's very white, he's, he has hair whiter than yours. Um, and I was looking behind him, and I'm seeing this African-American woman hugging him and kissing him. And I went like this, and what I heard out of her was, hey, asshole, I was here these six times before, you haven't seen me. That's what she said, and I was just like, I never was called an asshole from spirit from before. And I went like this, mm -hmm. and the client said, why are you doing that? And I said, well, this African-American woman, she's hugging you, she's kissing you, and she's calling me an asshole that I didn't see her these previous times that you've come to see me. And I said, I, I, I don't know what to say. I've never heard something like this before. And as I looked up, he was crying. He said, that was my fiance. I was wondering when she was gonna come in. So he was coming back 
every so session, he, says he, wanted to he wanted to have connection with her. Mm -hmm. And at the very first sitting, when, when she didn't come through, he goes, do you see anybody else mm -hmm. other than my mother? And I says, no, but don't tell me if there's other people that you're looking for. Because if you come back and have another sitting with me, the less that I know, the better. Yes. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So I told him, I says, don't tell me. So at the very mm -hmm. end of his sittings, different people would come through. And I was just kind of hopeful. I'm like, I sure hope some of the people that have come mm -hmm. through, grandparents or uncles and aunts, but it was on the seventh or eighth sitting, it was the African-American woman that was hugging him, and that was the one that he wanted. Do you know why like, some sweet comes and some not? Because it's all need. need. Um, it's need, and also, mm -hmm. um, it's very. Well, that's a great question. It's very individualistic from person to person. When a person passes over, sometimes that person really wants to make contact with the living, mm -hmm. but they don't know how. You know, so sometimes they will make contact through numbers. Sometimes people keep on seeing multiple random numbers that are the same numbers. Many times that spirit influenced. Um, when you get in the car, all of a sudden a song comes on, and that was the song that used to play with your son or your daughter. Um, that comes on, that spirit influence. So sometimes people on spirit side, they can influence the songs, they can influence the numbers, mm -hmm. they can be in your dreams. Um, other times they they it's really hard for them to come through. It's it's very different personalities just like yeah. here so some people are very sensitive here and open um, some people are not so when those people cross over many times the people that are more sensitive um, I, I would have to say more open um, you know they're able to make that communication stronger um, versus others mm -hmm. now even if you had like a very very agnostic or atheist person on earth and they didn't believe in any with mediumship or anything like that and they pass over and they want to make connection with their daughter Oh, they will. Um, they will push that energy across through mm -hmm. that dreams, um, through those sights, those sounds, in order to get that across. And that's the intensity, and the intensity by thought that they are pushing through. Mm -hmm. Heaven and hell. Mm -hmm. Question. Yeah. So maybe some people have imagination mm -hmm. from Christianity or mm -hmm. whatever that souls are kind of divided by okay this was good person or mm -hmm. whatever this was bad person is there any division yeah there's lots oh, there is? Okay. oh yeah lots. Well. yeah so i would so, like to know about that like how okay does that work? so ask me where san francisco is where san francisco it's that way mm -hmm. it's north where is san diego it's this way mm -hmm. but it's 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 not exact uh -huh. it's it's in a direction but it's not exact you know on spirit side there's nine different levels, mm -hmm. and each level has seven sections. So it's basically nine different grades, mm -hmm. but in each grade, there's, there's, there's um, in those nine grades, there's seven different levels. Mm -hmm. So let's just say, for example, you are like a Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. You'll probably be like at level like eight or nine, mm -hmm. you know? If you're kind of like a Hitler, you know, you'll probably be at probably level one, most mm -hmm. definitely level one. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully for me, I, mm -hmm. I hope that I make it to maybe, I don't know, seven or eight. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always tell my clients and friends, you know, I'm a medium and I've been doing this work my entire life, but I'm, I'm not a saint. Yeah, I'm human just like anybody else. I have my, my shortcomings like anybody else. Mm -hmm. And when I pass, I too will have to um, reflect on it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and that's going to be hard, not for me, but for other people who haven't been aware of that. Yeah, this will help. And my other question would be about uh, souls groupings. Mm -hmm. can, soul you, groups. Can, you, can you tell us something about that? Yes. Yeah, soul, soul groups. Yeah. Um, soul groups is all part of the reincarnation. Mm -hmm. And in a soul group, we have a certain amount of people. And before we start with that, I always mm -hmm. like to tell clients, mm -hmm. in life, you know, in our friends or family, we don't have you know any friends and we don't have any enemies. Mm -hmm. And when I do this with audiences, um, you know, a person will raise their hand up and says, well, I have an enemy, it's my mother-in-law and I can prove it, you know, and everybody starts laughing. And I says, okay, sure you have that as an enemy, and on the other hand, we have friends and lovers, but really all we have is teachers. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're here to teach us and teach us lessons. And so our lovers, our partners, our husbands, our wives, um, sometimes our children, they're teaching us love, unconditional love, mm -hmm. you know, difficult people, you know, um, they're teaching us patience or tolerance or forgiveness. So everybody's a teacher. Getting back to soul groups, there's a certain amount of people 
per soul group. Some of them are smaller, some of them are bigger. It's, it depends on your soul group. Mm -hmm. It's like different, like when you when you blow a, uh, you know, little, little child bubbles, mm -hmm. and when big bubble goes off, and a little small bubble, and, and a little tiny, tiny bubbles, you know, I look at those as different soul groups. Some of them, soul groups have a lot more people in them. Mm -hmm. Some of them are really small, but it's within that little soul group in that bubble, yeah. okay? So in that lifetime, you act out that play. You know, mm -hmm. I'm acting out in this play, a male, being a medium in this lifetime, coming from a very, very religious family. Mm -hmm. um, and next lifetime, you know, instead of being my mother's son, you know, my mother might be my daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, the next door neighbor here um, that might not like me um, or is angry with me consistently of all those years of being a next door neighbor, um, next lifetime that might be my best friend. Mm -hmm. We keep on changing it up in order to teach other people lessons. What do you think is your lesson? For right me, yeah. I think it's about service. Mm -hmm. For me, I think it's about consistently giving service. Um, I know that that would apply to a lot of people, um, but for me, it's it's more about service mm -hmm. um, and integrity. You know, being integrity, having integrity, doing the work that I do, um, and being very transparent and being very honest because mm -hmm. I represent spiritual people. Yes. You know, and mm -hmm. I'm a very very skeptical person by by nature. You know, I will never ever refer out client to another medium or a psychic mm -hmm. or um, a past life channeler, um, regression, regression therapist, mm -hmm. um, unless I've had this experience myself mm -hmm. and I see it. Just because unfortunately we live in a world of fraud. Yeah. You know? There's lots of scams um, and mm -hmm. crystal balls and yeah. all of these things. So there's a lot of fraud there mm -hmm. um, out there. Um, so you know sometimes when I see you know a business card it says Psychic, like all in one bar business card. Mm -hmm. Psychic, medium, clairvoyant, energy healer. I mean, all these different things. I'm like, mm -hmm. wow. There's just like so many. I mean, are you are you good in all of those? Which again, this is the skeptic in me. I like, I kind of find that a little bit hard to believe. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, I shouldn't be judgmental because I haven't had a session with that person. Mm -hmm. But I will only refer out when I've actually had. That just because that's Personally, yeah, because that's that just who I am. Thanks, mm -hmm. and I'm polite. Mm -hmm. okay, what about so them? Do they go there? Do they Absolutely. Go to the so, pets reincarnate with pets. The animal kingdom reincarnates with an animal animal kingdom. Humans they reincarnate with the human kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, you know, unlike you know the Hindus in India, you know, grandma is not the cow walking down the street. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's in their belief, but that's not true. Um, so do pets come through in sittings? You know, all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, just it was actually my my third sitting today at uh, in the afternoon. Um, a woman was doing a session by phone, and we're talking, we're talking, we're talking about. I think it was her her uncle that was coming through that raised her, and all of a sudden I stopped and she says, Is "Everything okay?" And I said, "There's this white cat that just jumped up on your lap," mm -hmm. and I said. Um, did your uncle have a cat, a white cat, that he's bringing here for you? And he, and she said, he didn't, but my white cat just died three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So that white cat came in. Um, but whenever pets come into a sitting, I always tell all my clients, that's the highest amount of love that comes into a sitting. That and babies. You know, multiple times throughout the week, I see mm -hmm. miscarriages, abortions, mm -hmm. stillborns coming through, um, and that's energy. So whenever I see a miscarriage, abortion, or stillborn on somebody's lap, whether male or female, mostly it's, it's female, but sometimes the, the, the miscarriage or abortion will be with the husband, the yeah. father that, you know, um, would, would have been the mm -hmm. father of the child. That's still the highest amount of love that comes in because with mm -hmm. pets and also with children, you know, young children under three years of age, it's unconditional love. You know, they don't care what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. They don't care what you drive. They don't care, you know, uh, what you look like. The only thing they care about is giving and receiving unconditional love. So whenever a pet comes into a sitting or a child, miscarriage, mm -hmm. abortion, or stillborn, that's the highest amount of love that comes in. It's like it's like a cake with the icing on it. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Another fun question. So how about when people are eating it together? Is the spirits around? Do they watch them? Right. Mm -hmm. Great question. Um, have you ever looked have you ever looked at a National Geographic magazine? Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. So you're looking through the National Geographic magazine mm -hmm. and you're seeing these naked people and this woman has these boobs and this other woman has this boob and she's na nursing the child. You know, the man is walking around half naked. Mm -hmm. But we're just looking at it's like, okay, that's how they live. That's how they live. You know, that's, that's what we do as, as, as at least as Americans mm -hmm. or, or Westerners or Caucasians. It's like, okay, this is how they live. 
but we're not like, oh my gosh, look, look. Um, so that's number one. Number two, when we are making love and when we're in intimate times, mm -hmm. those on spirit side will step back and know that's private time, okay. and they respect that. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. But, I, I sometimes I, I actually wonder about them myself. But <laughs> even before, you know? yeah, and that's true that they that they that they respect it. Mm -hmm. But let's just say, for example, you know, um, I don't know, just like you're 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 with your friend, and all of a sudden you're having dinner. And it was just supposed to be dinner, and all of a sudden you're making love on the on the on the kitchen table. Mm -hmm. And let's just say if your mother or your grandmother were, was, was, was was there. <laughs> um, it's it's like they don't care. It's mm -hmm. like it's like watching a National Geographic magazine. It's like oh okay, you know that's fine. And they just they just get the privacy. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us uh, about some powerful messages from spirits? Mm -hmm. Did they give you some really powerful messages? Like let's say about uh, forgiveness unconditional love, fear, mm -hmm. or these kind of things. You know, maybe some powerful messages. Yeah, from that. it's mm -hmm. um, it's very individualistic from person to person, depending on what that person. A lot of times, it's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, learning to forgive a father or a mother who treated you horribly. Um, but that's for that person. Some other times, it's 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 really learning and sending unconditional love. Mm -hmm. But I think whether a person comes to a medium or not, or whether they believe in mediumship, or whether they believe in God or not, or whether they're agnostic, um, I think the biggest word that anybody could, could learn and really resonate with mm -hmm. would be compassion. If you can be compassionate and have compassion for somebody, mm -hmm. um, it changes everything, you know? So I think that's the biggest word um, that I feel is out there. Yeah. But doing sittings, mm -hmm. that word might not be coming through. It might be forgiveness or let the anger go mm -hmm. or things like that. For me, it was more literally general question, like you say, so compassion. Like, let's say, what spirit us or that spiritual world, what do they want us to kind of like work on or operate with, you know? Yeah. Um, with that mm -hmm. being said, before a person incarnates into these bodies, okay, so mm -hmm. you, me, and everybody else, we're in soul form, mm -hmm. okay, and before we incarnate, when we're still in soul form, we're there with our spirit guide, mm -hmm. okay, so spirit guide is basically the, the this is, let's just say the best, fanciest concierge service at the Ritz-Carlton, mm -hmm. you know, you can ask for anything and, and, and they, they smile and they say, we're here to help you. So you're with a spirit guide, kind of like a concierge service, and they say, Ivana, okay, that's gonna be your mother, that's gonna be your father, you're gonna have this as a sister, you're gonna get divorced when you're 22, um, you're gonna lose your mother to cancer at 27, um, are you okay that you wanna incarnate? And the reason why you're I can here. make a decision, exactly. kind of like yes or no. Exactly. I can make that decision. Exactly, uh -huh. and you do. Yeah. And all of, all of the people that have come to this planet that mm -hmm. are here now have made the decision to be here. Um, so sometimes when a child um, is a, is a, a stillborn, mm -hmm. you know, um, or sometimes it's a miscarriage, it's that soul like, oh, I, 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 I don't want to do it. They can't wait to go. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, it's all part of that soul group there. It's all the lessons that we're here, here to learn. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I always tell clients, you know, it affects me too, you know. I have two parents that are very, very religious in the Catholic Church. You know, I'm the youngest of six kids, mm -hmm. um, and I have one sister who refers clients to me, and the rest of my family are praying for my soul, because mm -hmm. they think I'm going to go to hell in the handbasket. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you a funny story here. Um, this is going back maybe about seven or eight years ago. Um, my phone was ringing downstairs, and so um, I told my, it was ringing, and I was upstairs, and I told my partner, my current partner now, that I've been with him for now 23 years we've been together, um, I told him, I said, hey Kevin, I said, would you answer my phone? And he looked at me, he goes, it says the Antichrist is calling. And I'm like, don't answer it, it's my sister Teresa. So what happened was, I totally forgot about that, because, um, because, um, that I, I put this number in the contact because I picked up this number from a 562 area code one time like oh who's this and it was my sister and it was like fingernails on a chalkboard it's like I can't stand hearing her voice so I put in the Antichrist that tells me don't ever <laughs> don't ever okay the biggest lesson here mm -hmm. is I have to learn to send unconditional love and compassion to her mm -hmm. it's very very difficult but you know what as I said 
That's a lesson you're hoping. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's a lot easier said being said than done. You know, as I said, compassion. I have to really learn compassion for her. I think that she's just absolutely crazy because she's so religiously brainwashed in mm -hmm. the sense of like this. Yeah, if you yeah, exactly, if you don't go to confession, you're going to go to hell. If you don't receive the sacraments, you're not going to make it to heaven. So it's like, it's just so black and white. But I have to step out of that. I'm like, okay, Tim, you got to, you know, talk what you preach. You got to act how you preach. Mm -hmm. um, if you have to learn compassion, if that's one of the words, then we have to send compassion. So what I do is whenever I have random thoughts of her or my family, I just basically send pure love. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's really the best thing to, to do. Um, because you're trying. You're trying to show, show, show that compassion, show that yeah. love. And, you know, for a lot of your viewing um, audience, this is another great one um, about sending love. And it's basically sending the intention, mm -hmm. okay? So this is another true story uh, with a client of mine. Um, him and his mother um, came to see me together. And he, at that time, I think was 16 years of age, 15 years of age, she, she brought him in. And then um, three years later, he came in by himself. And I'm like, oh, hey, nice to see you again. And so we did the sitting and what came from spirit, I said, wow, your grandmother's talking, your, your, actually your great grandmother's talking about how your stepmother is evil. And I'm like, you have a stepmother? Because I remember you seeing you three years ago, it was your mom. And he goes, well, that's my biological mom, but I have a stepmother. And yes, mm -hmm. she is evil. Um, and I said, I believe you. And he started crying because nobody else believed him. Yeah. You know, he knew that this woman wanted him dead, mm -hmm. really. And I heard that from spirit. And when I said, yes, I totally um, believe you because she does want you out of the picture. You're in the way between, um, you know, her and your father. And so just having that reassurance that somebody believed in him, mm -hmm. um, you know, made all the difference in the world. However, at the very, towards the end of the sitting, he went like this and I said, are you okay? And he goes, I just realized next weekend I'm driving with them from California here to Las Vegas. Um, and I said, what's the problem? And he goes, I'll be in the car with both of them. I said, I don't want to be in, car, in the car with such evil. And I said, here's what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. I said, sit in the back seat, as you probably are, because you're still a child, um, but sit behind where your stepmother is. You know, yeah. don't sit behind your dad, sit behind your stepmother if you can. Um, and just kind of basically put your hands like this at times where they not, we're not seeing it and keep on sending her unconditional love. And he goes, she's evil why would i send her unconditional love and i says follow me here mm -hmm. so i says if you can keep on sending that unconditional love um, to her what it does ivana is when you send that love out it puts a, a shield around you mm -hmm. an aura okay and when that aura goes around you like this um, when that person sends evil or negativity back to you it bounces off that shield and, they, and it goes back to them mm -hmm. so he did that for the five and a half hour drive to las vegas and then he came back in about six months later, and I said, how did it go? And he came in laughing, he goes, you're not gonna believe it. He goes, I was in the car, I got to sit behind her, I kept on sending um, this unconditional love, which is basically, he was sending all the negativity back to her, right? Yes. They pulled into Caesar's palace, the valet opened the door, she ran to the toilet, and for the next three days, she sat on the toilet with diarrhea. <laughs> True story. That's wonderful. And yeah. he had this whole weekend with him and his dad. Yeah. So did he cause the diarrhea? No. no. He reflected the energy back and gave it back to her. Mm -hmm. Now, also with your viewing audience, it's also very important to understand is that when you do that mm -hmm. and you send that love to that person, sometimes they get a little, that energy gets a little frustrated and sometimes it gets a little worse mm -hmm. before it gets better. So I've heard some from clients saying, Tim, if I would not have done this, it would not have gotten worse. And I said, keep with it. And all of a sudden, nine out of 10 times, actually it's 9.8 out of 10 times, I've heard from clients saying, oh my gosh, it just it went away. Mm -hmm. I don't see them anymore. I'm like, see, it worked. But you have to have that faith. This is a good tool for actually people to use in everyday life, yeah. pretty much. Mm -hmm. I mean, we live in a, um, a world, you know, with, with so much judgment. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, and it's nice that when you know you can send that love, uh, unconditional love to a person um, or to a victim, um, it's really very healing for them mm -hmm. and also for yourself as well. Purpose. Mm -hmm. Do you think everybody has 
for this one? I do. Yeah, I don't feel that okay. God. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't feel that God makes mistakes. Like let's say yes. Like let's say you see you go in India. These these poor people on the street, maybe mm -hmm. they are yeah. uh, damaged mm -hmm. or they are maybe uh, disabled or mm -hmm. something. Right. What do you think about that? I feel that that's um, the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Um, you know. Who's to say that those, let's just say one person, let's just say that that disabled man, let's just say in a previous life that he disabled somebody else maliciously, mm -hmm. you know, um, he killed somebody or, malicious, or or injured somebody that was paralyzed. Now he has to go through it. Okay. So the person, okay, now let's make it more positive. Um, a person who is, let's say, paralyzed on the streets of India that person might have been a really good person in previous lives. Mm -hmm. However, they still need to learn humility. Mm -hmm. So then they choose that. You follow me? Yes, so it's, it's not always mm -hmm. something like, oh, I must have been a shithead in the past life. Yes. No, because um, you're supposed to experience as a soul every day. Exactly. exactly. So you might have any possible human experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. you know, in lifetimes, um, you know, we have incarnations as male and female. We keep on changing up. Mm -hmm. um, we change up at times the religion. We change up the ethnicity. We keep on changing things up to play all these different roles, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's basically the best way to explain to your audience. It's kind of like um, a second grade play, you know, you think, mm -hmm. you know, those little second graders. Um, and it's kind of like me, you know, it's like, I want to be the prince, you know. And the school teacher says, no, Tim, you're too tall. You know, you can't be the prince. I know I really want to be the prince. Um, and the teacher goes, no, Tim, you're going to be the tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I play the tree. So that was my job for that whole play. And then, of course, the prince, the prince, the princess, the villain, you know, all that stuff. When that play comes to a very end and, of course, the parents start applauding, then how I look at that is those, those kids go behind stage and say, okay, now I'm going to be the tree. Mm -hmm and you're gonna be the prince. You know, it's, you change things up. Mm -hmm. And that's the best way in very layman terms to understand that. What do you do after your day? Let's say you are working, so by end of the day, mm -hmm. you were overdosed, murdered, <laughs> died of cancer, everything right. can happen during right. your day. Yeah. What do you do to unwind? Yeah, so um, that's a very personal mm -hmm. question, but I'll be very, very honest mm -hmm. with you. For me, people are gonna think I'm crazy, but for me, Watching an episode of Dateline or Forensic Files is heaven for me. <laughs> and people say, oh my God, that's all death. It's killings. It's murder. Mm -hmm. well, that's so negative. And I'm like, no, it's not. I think it's very fascinating. But the most important thing, Ivana, when I watch those Dateline episodes mm -hmm. um, and Forensic Files, there's always closure at the very end. Mm -hmm. They always catch the person. and. I, I like those shows a lot for me, and that's how I relax, is because when I do a sitting, for example, when, this is this last week, you know, a woman lost her son to a drunk driver, and that person fled. They, they don't know who did it. Mm -hmm. So here's a woman who's going through her whole life not knowing who killed, who murdered her son because they left the scene. Can you find out? Sometimes I can, mm -hmm. sometimes I can't, but that's not what I specialize in. Yeah. So for me, when I watch those, those programs, mm -hmm. um, that's closure. I'm like, oh good, there's closure. And that's what it's for me. The other thing is exercise. I really love to hike. Mm -hmm. I work out at the gym four days a week with a personal trainer, as I call him, a personal babysitter. Mm -hmm. But it gets, because I sit in this, cha this chair, I sit in this office, okay. you know, five, six, seven hours a day, four days a week. So I need that activity. So exercise is really good for me. And the beach. I live at the beach, mm -hmm. um, and even during the winter time, just walking my dog along the beach, beach. is mm -hmm. is is really good. All getting all those negative ions. For me, it's ultimate to mm -hmm. be by the water. Mm -hmm. I yeah. love it. Mm -hmm. How soon can person go to the medium? Let's say, it's, uh, I don't know, their loved one dies, sure. can they go next day, or is there any kind of period they should wait? You can go the next day. However, mm -hmm. on my website um, at timbronmedium.com, mm -hmm. people can go to if they want to. I always like to say wait about two to three months. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the reason why. If you had a brother who committed suicide yesterday, mm -hmm. and you are a crying mess, and you come in and you're sitting in front of me, and you're like, my brother committed suicide, I, 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 I'm, I'm really distraught. I can't make contact because your emotions are too mm -hmm. jiled up like that. The brother who's coming through, he's like, yeah, I was thinking about doing this for two years, and I finally did it, I'm, I'm really happy, mm -hmm. you know? Now, the reverse is, a woman could come in and say, gosh, my brother just died of cancer yesterday. I really want to make contact. I've been preparing, I've been preparing this, 
having a sitting with a medium and making contact with them. That brother who crossed over, say it was in hospice, he might not want to be over in spirit side. He might be like leaving his money behind or his earthly possessions, or mm -hmm. he might not be adjusted on spirit side. So I have found in all my experience, if you wait about six weeks to two months, two months to three months, it gives both sides time to get adjusted. Yeah. However, that attorney that I, that mm -hmm. I, the client of mine, um, when he saw me, his mother came in very strong. She only died three days earlier. Mm -hmm. So I just don't want people to be disappointed when they come to see me. Um, not that I have any control over it, but if we can mention that about a little bit of a, a time space there and you can mm -hmm. consistently send that thought out to that person, it makes all the difference in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so Tim, you achieved so many things in, in during this time. You are still pretty young. You are one of the most famous mediums in the world and all of the work you do. You are author of published book, Life and Death. Can you tell us something about this book and also I wonder, or for people, if you can say, what else do you strive for? Yeah, you know, just last year, actually two years ago, I did a documentary with Deepak Chopra, mm -hmm. Sharon Stone, the Dalai Lama, mm -hmm. um, and a list of other people, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Um, That's wonderful, congrats. Yeah, and thank you. And uh, we did this documentary. We all came together, mm -hmm. and we put all of our, our, our talents together, and we talked about raising the vibration of the planet. Mm -hmm. and. That's called The Cure. You can order that on Amazon. Um, and it's an amazing documentary about helping to, to lift the planet up. But, um, you know, I just love doing my work. I love doing shows. I haven't been doing the, the large casino shows because of the pandemic, yeah. but I still do one-on-one -on -one sittings mm -hmm. um, by phone and also in person. Can, uh, can you say where people can find you? Yeah, at timbronmedium.com. Mm -hmm. And you can sign up to be on the monthly newsletter. We send out a newsletter twice a month. Um, also, I'm on all the social network, um, Tim Braun Medium, so on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, all that stuff is Tim Braun Medium. Mm -hmm. um, and if you guys enjoyed the show, mm -hmm. um, send an email. You know, Please do send an email so we can have him back. Yeah, <laughs> sure. If you guys want me to come back, I'll, I'll make time, you know. It will be, it will be on demand. So please, everybody, <laughs> you can write in a comment if you are interested, if you have more questions for Tim, please write it down. A few years back, Tim published this book, Life and Death. Can you please tell us what is this book about? Yeah, so it's basically about how I started out. Um, and my experiences as a medium, different stories. Mm -hmm. um, but more importantly, there's different tools in there that you can help people with their grief and recovery. I had this book in my mind for 10 years before I wrote it. Mm -hmm. But before I wrote it, Ivana, I wanted to make sure that any person who has this book, whether you're a devout Jew, a born-again Christian, a Muslim, um, um, a Mormon, LDS, I wanted to, the intention that any person that would read this, they could read it, and they say, okay, that's a that's a good book, or that's an okay book. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I shot the bar low. I'm like, it's mm -hmm. okay book. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten so many different feedback from different people saying, it's it's amazing. And it's amazing because of all the, the techniques about how to deal with, with grief. Um, you know, I've fortunately got three New York Times bestselling authors to endorse it. I got yes. about 28 other endorsements from well-known and famous people around the world. But um, that makes me feel good because mm -hmm. Um, they believe in me, you know, and believe in my work, and, and uh, I, I, I find that honoring. That's beautiful. Do you have any message for our viewers? No, I just <laughs> want to say if you guys want me to come back, yeah. um, you know, um, let me know. I'll come back, and if there's more questions that they have. Um, I'm an open book, you know, any question that they send in, no matter how personal or um, you know, how open it may be, I'll answer it. Anything I can do to help a person mm -hmm. be in this planet. You know, being in this planet is a very, very difficult thing, you know. Um, there's a, an author who wrote, most of the planet is swimming in the gutter, but there's a few of us that are laying on our back looking at the stars. Mm -hmm. And if you kind of look at that, really, we're in a very gutter-like world. I mean, look at what's happened with politics and, and um, religions and all these different wars. And, you know, we're, we're all kind of all in the gutter, but if we can really strive to find that light and look at the stars and be grateful, um, that's the most important thing. You know, um, do I feel prayer is important? Yes. Prayer is important because you're talking to God. Mm -hmm. But I find what is more important is meditation because meditation is listening to God. 
If you don't want to say God, you can say Spirit, you can say the universe, you can say Mother Mary, it's all the same. But learn to meditate. And I pers I mean, I've been over 30 countries, I've been to different churches and temples and mosques throughout mm -hmm. all the world. Um, but I think the best prayer that any person can ever do is say thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, stand in your driveway and say, thank you for me that I can smell the air. Thank you very much that I have earlobes, that I don't, I haven't lost them to cancer. Thank you that I have a partner. You know, as long as you just say thank you to the universe and really mean it with your heart, that's the best prayer. Universe love when you say thank you. It, it, very much so. Very much so. And thank you, Kim, for yeah, this you're interview. Welcome. Thank yeah. you so much sure. for your beautiful thank story. You for yeah. What you do for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very <laughs> thank much. Thank you very much. Yeah, I sure. I appreciate your time. Thank